concept of functional tethering of the spinal cord in idiopathic scoliosis patients has well been described in international literature. In an MRI study from Hong Kong, evidence has been found for the tethering of the spinal cord in patients with adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. It should be possible to release this functional tether with the help of certain neuromobilizing exercises. The first exercise is to mobilize the spinal cord in a cervical area. First of all, we have to fix our brachial nerves by pushing ourselves up on our inner rotated fists as far as possible. Then we repeatedly side bend our neck and turn our chin to the opposite side. This exercise can be performed 20 times, 3 times a day. The second exercise is to release the whole spinal cord by wringing of the full trunk and neck. We can enforce this movement by pushing our hand against our thigh. Also, this exercise number two can easily be performed 20 times, 3 times a day. Exercise 1 and 2 can also be performed while sitting on a chair. Exercise number 3 is taken from a Qigong protocol. The stance is with the feet a little wider than the pelvis and a slight inner rotation of the feet. Each position, one after the other, is held for a few seconds. This picture describes the movement as it is performed fluently from A to D. Lateral bending is strictly performed in frontal plane only. Here you see one cycle of the exercises performed to the left. This exercise should be performed three times each side. Exercise number four is also derived from a Qigong protocol. From upright standing, a step back is performed in the way as described on the upper right of the picture. Also, this exercise should be performed three times each side. The concept of functional tethering of the spinal cord has been described in literature. The treatment of this condition in patients with idiopathic scoliosis has been described in a pilot study. To 
today with the application of the high corrective Gensing embrace, we sometimes experience symptoms of this condition. Sometimes we find a certain sign of spinal tethering. When in upright standing, the patient is rather balanced and forward bending, a huge deformity appears, like in the following. Sometimes in the Adam's bending test, there may be back pain when the neck is flexed additionally. Also stiffness of a curvature may be a sign of functional tethering of the spinal cord in patients with idiopathic scoliosis. However, this condition can be treated using shockwave therapy. So here we have a patient with a right thoracic curvature and a typical flat back in the thoracic area. The orientation of the applicator is in cranial direction as can be seen here. However, the applicator is also tilted into the plane of trunk rotation. You have to make sure not to hit the spinous processes during the process of treatment. The treatment is performed directly paravertebral. The apical area is in the focus of treatment. With our treatment we mainly focus on the concave side, but we also take care of the convex side from time to time. We start the treatment with lowest intensity. We increase the intensity until the border of being painful. Overall, 2000 hits are applied. After the treatment, usually symptoms appearing in the brace vanish. Take it in.